In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Cardinal Leger Lancers. Now, when the COVID-19 pandemic started uh, 15 months ago, it started with uh, a great deal of uh, unity and consensus. Uh, people were uh, just so grateful for the response and for the hard work of our frontline workers. I think just about every time we met for prayer, we remembered the sacrifices that were being made by frontline workers. And we know that frontline workers are those workers who not only uh, work in hospitals, who work uh, in the medical profession, uh, doctors and nurses and hospital workers, but frontline workers are also people who work in uh, grocery stores, drug stores. Uh, they work in um, big box stores that are open to supply food. Uh, so frontline workers are uh, a large segment of the population, and many of you are frontline workers. We know students that work in drug stores and students that work in grocery stores. And one of the things that was done in uh, New York City and in London, and I can't seem to remember if we did it in Toronto or in Brampton was, uh, we would, uh, at a designated time, I know this happened in New York and London, people would uh, take out a pot and, uh, or a pot or pan, and they would bang on the pot at 7 p.m. and do that just outside their front door or open a window, and they would uh, bang the pot in uh, order to support, show their gratitude for frontline workers. So I'm giving you a, a little uh, pot this morning to get you uh, started uh, for the uh, weekend. Gee, that didn't sound so good, but uh, you know what I mean, this kind of pot. Um, but last week on the uh, Journal or on the National on CBC, one of our former students, Michaela Portelli, she was featured on the uh, national news. And uh, she was uh, featured as a young person from Brampton, where we know COVID has really just proliferated. It spread. And that's because of how many essential services and how many workers that work in these areas live and uh, work in Brampton. And Michaela told the story that she works at a drugstore in uh, the Brampton area. And uh, she also studies. She's been studying nursing online. And in the story, she said that she contracted COVID. And she seems to feel that the only place she ever went was to work. So there's a good chance. I mean, there's a good chance that she contracted COVID from where she worked. I mean, this happens. This is uh, not casting blame, but uh, it just shows you the risk. And Michaela and her mom were living with her grandparents, her maternal grandparents. And Michaela uh, brought the COVID home and uh, her mother contracted COVID and her grandparents both contracted COVID and her grandparents both died within a week or two of each other after contracting COVID. And so, I mean, this is just so sad. But, you know, this happens, right? This is what happens. And, you know, we know Michaela and we know her grandparents. They're not just a statistic. We know them and we love them. And this is uh, an unfortunate uh, travesty, really. But what Michaela said in her uh, interview on the national news was that customers come into the store and uh, they yell at her. And uh, they yell at her because the store shelves aren't properly stocked or they can't find what they're looking for or they may be mad uh, because they have to wear a mask or whatever, right? And that what's happened? What, what's happened? Like we started off really recognizing and celebrating and honoring our frontline workers, but things have changed. And maybe it's COVID fatigue. But over the past couple of days, I heard another story. And it's about the dreaded Versace virus vultures. The Versace virus vultures. And it's a group of people who show up uh, at uh, pop-up vaccine clinics. And there was one that uh, opened in Chinatown, uh, just off Spadina on Cecil Street in Toronto. And it was reaching out to uh, people in the Chinese uh, Canadian community the downtown community, many of whom don't speak English, encouraging them to get vaccinated. And it was really a, a great idea. But people showed up. And uh, according to the people who worked at, the, uh, at this pop-up clinic, they showed up in big luxury cars. And I guess there's a, there's a rumor that if there's extra vaccines at the end of a pop-up clinic, 
uh, people who weren't the target market for those vaccines, they're able to receive a, a vaccine. That's if there's any left over at the end of the day. But these vaccine vultures, they showed up demanding early on in the day that they get their second dose of vaccine. And uh, the workers who were there uh, were just so frustrated and constantly defending themselves and they were being yelled at and abuse. And listen, fatigue is setting in. You know, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, fatigue, and we're getting tired and, you know, people telling us what to do. But let's just hang in there. Let's hang in there. Let's be part of the solution. Let's just continue to uh, wait our turn and uh, pray. Because, you know, we can get mad and we can get mad at, you know, government officials. They're not making up their mind fast enough. There's not enough direction. But, you know what, we can get mad and we can throw up our hands and we can go crazy. But let's pray. Let's just pray for peace and for calm. And let's pray for our leaders, right? It's not an easy job being a leader at this time. What do you do, right? There's consequences for your decision. So but we're going to pray for all of our elected leaders and, you know, our school board officials. We're going to pray that they make good decisions, okay? And we're going to trust. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to please be with them. And then, Lord, please help us be patient and be good followers, you know, uh, being a good follower in a crisis is as important as being a good leader. Everybody can't be a leader. So let's just be good followers and trust and be calm. We're going to get there. We're going to support each other. And remember, you know, whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, we do to Jesus, right? So let's help the least and we're going to get through this. And uh, maybe we'll even see each other next week. We'll see how that goes. But And we're praying that a good decision gets made. So let's pray. This Sunday is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. And let's celebrate the Holy Trinity uh, today uh, by saying, uh, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Kateri, Tekakwitha, and Cardinal Leger, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And here's a little uh, noise, making some noise for our frontline workers. And a little pot uh, music for my Lancer friends today, too. Have a safe weekend. We'll see you on Monday.